Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. I'm Rex. I'm Daniel. He's a level three whiskey smoker. He is an apprentice mooch. But he didn't wear his necklace, so he's not even a mooch. <laughs> busted! Alright, we got this note from say busted. Magnet, yeah, busted. It's it's right out later in this video, I'm gonna say psych. Listen, oh god, I hate you guys. And then I'm gonna say something and finish it with not. Daniel, <laughs> how many times a week do I accuse you of being old as f? Yeah. <laughs> Not often, but today's one, I guess. Uh, so this is from Magnificent Bastards, Chris Crenshaw and Lauren Crenshaw. Chris Crenshaw and Lauren Crenshaw. I would bastard you, but I'm apparently not even, not even an apprentice. I'll do it. Chris, Chris and Lauren, you Magnificent Bastards. <laughs> <laughs> so they wrote a note. Uh, they had the privilege of doing a private tasting with Deb, and Deb was amazing. Uh, they're sending this Basil Hayden 2x2 two two for review and as a thank you, be sure to save some for Deb. No. Also, I wanted a part of me, this is from Chris, I, want a part of, I wanted a part of me to stay in the vault forever. What did he leave? Look closely at the subscribe sign. Ah, yeah. initials. CC. I haven't noticed that until now. <laughs> you awesome. got one by us. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Oh, bank shot. We, All right. We, uh, we actually had a lot of people sign the Moochine. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Including like, some <laughs> pics. So that was... <laughs> so there that was like, your fault. There were so many people at the launch party. They were signing the Moochine. And I walk over. I was like, wow, I can't believe nobody did a <laughs> pic yet. Yeah. So, so we, forget who had the sharpie. It was like, okay, okay. Yeah. They <laughs> sure. <laughs> no. No. Wait a minute. <laughs> okay. So here's the thing, and you're gonna get another little bit of a rant, but this is an interesting experiment from Basil Hayden. So it's Basil Hayden. Pro just pronunciation. You know this. This is. Should we make it a whole episode about pronunciation? Yes. Yeah. And we should include Roy from Agua Vita. Yeah. Give me a shit. And Terry from Ireland. Yeah. Yeah. Who will tell us. Which apparently Terry's go to move is just say it real quick. Yeah. Say it real quick. Say fast. it real quick and no one will notice you <laughs> screwed it up. Okay, so this is two. Remember, Basil Hayden is one of my just classic, easy drinking, more wheat heavy bourbons. Mm -hmm. This is two rye and two bourbons mixed together. Where have you heard of that before? Two rye and two. Rye and bourbon mixed together. Is it Where bourbon? have you heard of that? Is it Burai? Yes! Well done! You are paying attention. Is that, is that a it's high, high West? High West, yeah. Yes. So, here's the funny thing. Somebody gave me a High West hat. He, look, oh, people. You got a High West hat? I did get a High West hat. It's I would in, wear that. It's in my car. Uh, Whenever you, get, you send us stuff, thank you so much. Write your name on it. Put your name on it. Yeah. Because yeah. I want to be able to like give you a specific shout out there. So, first, let's do tasting notes. It's really nice on the notes. So this is a blend of a five-year-old straight rye, a seven-year-old high rye straight rye, yeah. a thirteen-year-old straight bourbon, and a six-year-old straight bourbon. Okay. Okay. Man, that's really. I'm. I'm. I don't remember being this excited about trying a Basil Hayden. Yeah. Well, this is to me smells more like a rye than a bourbon. Yes. No. You got technically you've got two ryes and a high rye. But the things that I don't often like about rye, those mm -hmm. are. You know, fairly non-existent, and the things that you know, I kind of I find interesting Ooh. and rye. That's that's all up in there. Interesting. So I still get slightly pepperminty, slightly candied rye notes in the nose, but I also get that dusty Dust corn note. See, I'm dusty corn on the nose. I'm looking for the peppermint. I don't see the peppermint on the nose. I think it it, it jumped out after I took my first sip. You got the dusty corn with a thread of the rye spice going through it. And I get a little bit of the candied cherry, but the taste to me is mostly the dry barrel and corn. Not a lot of the sweet rye taste. That's more, on the nose, that's more rye than bourbon. On the taste, that's more bourbon than rye. Yeah, I completely agree. Yeah. Nose is rye, taste is bourbon. Yeah, yeah. But it does have the minty finish. I eventually get to a cherry finish. You say minty, I yeah, say Yeah, and I also get that my tongue is dry, like from the barrel tannin yes. type experience. It is a dry finish, for sure. It's interesting, you get minty, I'm getting... Let me see if I can find it. Cherry in the taste or in the nose? On the finish, on the taste. Oh. Yeah, still not getting that. 
All right, we got the Zach Bowen random question. How can whiskey companies like Johnny Walker get away with mixing other distilleries' whiskeys and selling them as their own? Because that's been going on for almost 200 years. Yeah. <laughs> because uh, the origins of the whiskey that was largely consumed in the 1800s was of shopkeepers blending whiskeys together to sell something to their customers. It's they were merchants. And they were because back in the day, yeah. the product even from one distillery yeah. could be inconsistent. Yes. And shopkeepers were attempting to correct this by taking all the deliveries from the different distilleries and mixing it together to create a consistent flavor profile. Sure. So you you spread out your sources. Yep. And then you're able to more consistently hit something that people yes. want to come back to and get time and time again. So this started as an era of merchants selling whiskey under the merchant brand. Okay. As opposed to featuring a distillery brand. And it's continued in Scotland, and it has, uh, it's not taken over the U.S. quite yet. Well, and, and Ireland is headed that direction. More and more so, though. Because mm -hmm. what's, what's interesting about the history of whiskey in Scotland, and then it's starting to happen in the States more and more, mm -hmm. is how simultaneously collaborative and competitive yes. whiskey is. Behind the scenes... There's a tremendous number of distilleries that are working together to make yeah. stuff. Yeah, highly but, collaborative. But, you know, when it comes to what retail. you see on yeah, retail, you wouldn't know it. Yeah, no idea. Yeah. Well, like, for example, you wouldn't know as an Irish whiskey consumer how many of the whiskeys that you uh, drink and then turn into a war against which is better are all made at the same distillery. <laughs> 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 oh, good times. Can I say this, though? The huh. more I go back to the Basil Hayden, mm -hmm. the thinner it seems to get. Yeah. I like it. It was magical at first and then got less and less good. It's Yeah. This is 40% and I'm starting to get to that point where it's starting to taste like a 40%. So whiskey. here's the irony and I take no, I pick no dog in this fight. Okay. I'm just recognizing that there is a, an ironic situation. Sure. Okay. So one of the things that High West is lauded for yes. is this innovative idea mm -hmm. of mixing things that before would never have been mixed. Right. And creating this magical unicorn whiskey. Right. right, and the people who talk about it lauded as, "Wow, the balls on High West! Wow, the guts they had to just strike out into unknown territory right. and risk and try something magnificent!" Right. right, and then Basil Hayden does it, right. and everyone's like, "What do they think they're doing? <laughs> they're innovative. This is bullshit. Stick to what you do. Know what? Know your strengths." You know, and I find it ironic right. that what the same action that is magnified and, and uh, shouted in a bullhorn right. for craft distillers right. is, is cause for shame <laughs> for classic distilleries. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And now, here's what I think. This <laughs> is, now we're in opinion territory. I think that the consumers are right, but about the wrong thing. Okay. Right? Sure. I think that there's a reason that you praise High West, but shit on Basil Hayden for doing the same thing, the Jim Beam product, basically, right? And that is because uh, they're violating their character diamond. Uh, now you're getting in. Okay, go ahead. No, what I think is you have come to understand the character of this distillery sure. as a certain thing. And this does not fit the character of that distillery. And it feels like, you ever watch a TV show and it gets towards right, like the season right before it got canceled? Yeah. <laughs> and you find one character saying lines that really should have been said by another character? So, you know what I mean? Yeah, I do. And you start to feel like, Ah, oh, that was not, there's no way that person would have done that. That's a complete violation of everything we believed about that character. And then you feel betrayed, and then you stop watching the show, and then it gets canceled. I think things like this, this kind of innovation from Basil Hayden, mm. is a level of action that doesn't fit consistently with what people have come to love about that brand. And so it feels like a violation. They should have started another brand name that its only job was to release interesting experiments. <laughs> no, hold on. Speaking as somebody who is, we got the Whiskey Vault and the Whiskey Tribe, the Magnificent Bastard. No, 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 I'm saying the they used the Thing about the Tasting Room and the Crowded Barrel no. and the V. Weiss somewhere along the No, 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 no I'm not and saying A long new, time ago there was a Charlatan. I'm saying new series. There's like a right? dozen. Because here's the thing, this is coming from the Jim Beam Distillery. Right. So it should have been a Jim Beam series. Then you still have all of the name, so you but say, it's the Jim Beam Experimental Series. You just say, this is not... This is not a Basil Hayden, in, which is its own sub-brand of Jim Beam. Whoa. Whoa. Can I get a word count? No. Can I get a word count here? Just a little... 
I can't find the other. Oh, it's a little word count. You know what? As long as your rants result in you pouring more whiskey, I'm fine. Yeah. He's got the boo ride. We got Jason Werner. Have been debating whether or not to get a bottle. Being a Dylan fan and a Bourbon fan. Oh, uh, this is Heaven's Door. And you two chuckleheads talk me into it. We'll order one straight away. We talked Heaven's him Door. into ordering some. Yeah. Heaven's Door. Certainly. Yeah. To me, the barai is more bourbon than rye versus this one being more rye than bourbon. No, on the taste. On the taste, we were saying this is rye on the nose, bourbon on the taste. Right. This, is, this one is bourbon on the nose. Now, this is 40%. This On the nose, I can tell you, that's not 40%. What's the high whist? It's 46. 46, all right. But it's so much better, for one. It's more round. It has a real finish. Yeah. It doesn't just drop off. It doesn't feel brittle. It's amazing how much that extra 6% gives you Yep. in terms of... Uh, and my guess is they they might have filtered it less too. You think? Yeah, because it feels more highly filtered. It feels thinner, and this feels like it has more of the oils. What left were you over. saying about Heaven's Door? So what I was saying about them, uh, like he said, I wasn't sure if I wanted this whiskey, and then I watched you guys, and I went and bought it. One of my great fears is that we are. Uh, Making people not be able to pay rent, no. or like they're buying too many whiskeys because they want to drink everything that we're drinking this and is, have this fun with us. This and how somehow, we solve, this is how we solve that. Somehow, we're hurting. This, this is how we solve families. That. This is how we solve that. Yeah, all of the bottles. Uh, you save those, mm -hmm. and we just need to do a video talking about how to use empty bottles to create a shelter. Mm -hmm. So, when, <laughs> when you can't pay the rent. When you can't pay the rent, you can live in your empty bottle house. <laughs> like a homeless person. <laughs> no, we've said multiple times before. It's like, hey, just chill out. There's there's so many good whiskeys. I did a, 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 a lens video recently. Mm -hmm. It's the thing, that, in the thing that I can't name on this channel. Starts with P, ends with Atreon. <laughs> yeah. And uh, my personal collection, mm -hmm. how many whiskeys do you think I have in my house? Four. Right Two. Two. There you go. Both of them mooched, of course. Yeah. But uh, no, at any given time, you don't need to have anything crazy or elaborate. Yeah, I totally agree. Uh, it's one of the things why, I, one of the reasons why I'm excited about the Whiskey Tribe meetups is because one of the, if we do this right, it's going to be a way for people to drastically expand the number of things they've been able to experience with whiskey. Yep. And I see it as, because man, I'm looking across the room. There's an entire, like, fifth of the room like the floor over Stuff here. Stuff on the floor. It's just littered with bottles. You can't even walk over here. What people have been able to do on this channel mm -hmm. for us. Thank you. Yes. You, you're ridiculous. Thank you. We now have a year's worth of reviews we, that we have to keep up with. We do. But that kind of generosity, mm -hmm. we want to aim at each other. You guys in the tribe. Hey, yeah. hey you want to share whiskeys. That's fantastic. Share whiskeys with each other. That's a big part of what I want the meetups to be. Yeah, especially because the meetups. Don't even aim it this way. Aim it at each other. We're, we're so good. We so much appreciate it when somebody sends something new. We but when, with that level of generosity in the community, we want to figure out how those people can share whiskeys with each other. I agree. And broadly, drastically expand the whiskeys they've been able to try. So your indecision on this, buy it or not buy it. Uh, dude, I have two whiskeys in my house. Both You're not going to buy it. I'm not going to buy it. No. I, uh, I I would rather have the classic Basil Hayden than this new thing. Fair enough. Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight, may you fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal a lover's heart. If you drink, may, may you, you drink, drink with us. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw in a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.